and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of keeping peace in your heart, joy in your family, and love in your family. Today I'm talking to you here by the ocean, where you find beautiful nature, you find peace, you hear the waves, you see the beautiful water, and it puts peace in your heart. But truly, if you don't have a love for God, a faith for God, this by itself won't help you. You need a great love and communication with God, knowing that God loves you and is with you. In the world, there's many problems and many sufferings. And if you don't have that love for God, nature itself won't bring that peace and love to you, or any other thing will bring you that joy. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of family prayer. The family that prays together stays together. All the problems in the world today is because the world is not praying. And the families are not praying the way they should. So the families that pray together will have a unity, will have a peace and love. One prayer very powerful that we should say every day with our families is the Holy Rosary. With the Holy Rosary we have the Blessed Mother blessing us with her prayers, with her love, with her sweet presence, with her intercession and her love of Jesus Christ into our hearts. Let us pray the Rosary every day. Every day, the family eats together, the family does their homework, the children, the mother cleans the house, the father comes home. They must be together, otherwise it's not a family. You could call it a family, but if the family doesn't go out together and do things together, and they just come home, and they go to the rooms and shut the doors and eat and do what they want, then they're not really a family. A family is a definition of those who do things together, who live together, who play together, eat together, work together, who pray together. Because when we pray, that's where we receive all our graces, all our blessings to love one another. It's very hard to live in a family because every person has their own way of doing things. And if you don't practice patience, if you don't practice humility, you don't practice forgiveness and charity, then there's hatred, there's selfishness, there's laziness, and there's all sorts of fighting and discord. And the devil lives in that family, not God's love and peace. So let us learn to pray the rosary each day. Let me tell you a few things and a few benefits of praying the rosary. If we pray the rosary every day, we have Mary praying with us. When we say, every Hail Mary, we ask the Blessed Mother to bless us. Every Hail Mary is like a rose. A beautiful rose you offer to your mother, and every time you say a whole rosary, it's like offering a beautiful bouquet of roses. And the Blessed Mother is very happy, and she prays for us, and she her peace is with us. Every time I say my rosary by myself, when I do it with a group, and I remember when I do it with my family, I feel a great peace, a great joy, a presence of the Blessed Mother. I go to the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. And when I'm there, I feel her great sweetness, her great joy, her presence, her love being with me, with her son, Jesus Christ. And so when we say a rosary, there's a great joy and peace and a love and a presence that comes over us and a great power of God's strength in us. So every time we say the rosary, we offer the Blessed Mother a beautiful bouquet of roses. So we must pray with our minds and with our hearts and not only with our lips. When you pray, it's very hard, we get distracted. And so as long as we're trying, and if we see ourselves being distracted, which often we do, almost every time we say the rosary, as long as you get back to your meditation. Because saying the rosary is much more just saying our fathers and Hail Marys and Glory Bees. It's, it's meditating. It's reflection at the places that you're praying about. The joyful mystery, the sorrowful mystery, the glorious mystery. Now we have the luminous mysteries. These mysteries help us to put us in the place and time of Jesus and learn virtue and act as Jesus acted and talk as Jesus acted and love as Jesus acted. So it's very important that we have this great love in our hearts and the rosary help us to meditate because many people tell me, Father, I don't know how to pray. Well, they say the rosary, but they just say our fathers and Hail Marys, but in, re in, in reality, they really are not praying because they're just saying words they memorized. Praying is talking from your heart and communicating to God. So when we pray the rosary, we pray it slowly. We don't pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed that art thou. It's not a race. We pray it not 
slowly like a turtle, but we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. We pause, and when I pray for my heart, grace comes into my heart. When I pray deeply, air comes into my lungs. Air comes into, and, and oxygen comes into me. But if I don't breathe, if I don't eat, I don't have air to breathe and live. I don't have food to live. If I don't pray, that's the food, that's the air in my lungs to survive. But we must pray well. We must pray with humility, pray with love, and pray with a desire to want to be better. The rosary gives us unity, not disunity. It gives us charity. It gives us great love. So let us, for example, the first joy for mystery. First, we pray the creed on the cross. Then we pray on our Father. Then we pray three Hail Marys. And then our Father. And then we say the first joy for mystery, the Annunciation. And then we remember for just a moment, we pray for a special virtue. Mary, help me to do God's will during the day today. Even the most difficult things. When I have to suffer and do things that I don't want. Mary, please help me to do the will of God as you did when the angel came to you. We read in verse, chapter 1, verse 28 in, in Luke. The angel came to Mary and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. That's the rosary we say. We say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. So we say, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We're praying for her in intercession. But the, the prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace, is the prayer that we hear from the angel Gabriel, who announced the Blessed Mother if she would become the Mother of God. And we, then we pray the other uh, second mystery, the visitation, when Elizabeth talks to Mary when she sees the Blessed Mother and says, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. She was filled with the Holy Spirit, inspired the Holy Spirit, and said, Blessed Mother, who are you that could come to me, the Mother of God? And so we meditate that. We think about that. We put ourselves in those places. So we could stand by the door of the house of the Blessed Mother in her room or if she's outside by her garden and we see an angel who prostrates in front of the Blessed Mother and talks to her with humility and love and with great uh, joy and we see the Blessed Mother with humility saying, your will be done. I am just a handmaid of the, uh, the servant of the Lord. And Blessed Mother says yes to God, thus says no to God. How often during the day myself when I don't want to do God's will, I say, no, I don't want to do it. It's my will. I want to do my will. I don't want to help. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. And I'm not like the Blessed Mother. I'm with my own selfishness, and I want to do what I want to do. So I must ask the Blessed Mother every day of my life to do her, to do her will, because her will is God's will. So I pray this Hail Mary, the first joy for mystery, do God's will each day of my life. And then that gives me grace, and I think of myself being there in a beautiful room, simple with a chair and a bed and a table and looking out the window, see beautiful hills and mountains and I see the angels so beautiful and Mary so humble and so sweet and she's saying, Jesus, God the Father of Muddy, I accept Jesus in my womb, I accept to be the mother of God, I accept to do God's will, whatever suffering that costs me, your will be done. Then we go to the second mystery as I explained, the visitation. We see the Blessed Mother, she's pregnant, but she goes to visit Elizabeth because she's full of charity and wants to help her because her cousin is much more along in pregnancy and needs her help. And she's not selfish, she makes a sacrifice, she's not thinking about herself. So Blessed Mother, fill me with charity during the day when I, when I need to help others and not think of myself. And I pray the Our Father and Hail Marys to, to remember that because every day I fall in charity. I fall because of my pride and selfishness. So Mary, give me selfishness to help around the house, to help my mother and father, to help my brothers and sisters, and not just to think of myself and not help anyone else. So 
the, the, the rosary helps us to give us that love and charity when we meditate. Then we can meditate on the third mystery, the nativity, how Mary trusted in God. She was going to now have her baby. It was the moment of the birth, and there was no place, and she was looking for a place, and no hotels would accept her, but she prayed to God. She encouraged Joseph that it would be okay. And she didn't complain and get angry and started getting too nervous and panicking. When we have trials and suffering, we don't start yelling and screaming and get angry and crying. We say, Blessed Mother, you trusted in your son. You knew that, that God was with you. And you had trust and confidence in God's providence, even in a mo moment more difficult of giving birth. And there did not look like there was any hope you were going to have a baby out in the street. But you trusted God. And you trusted that he would love you and protect you and be with you. So we pray that during the day, if I lose my money for the bus and I have no place to get home, if I have problems that I don't know how to get out of, I pray to God for the wisdom and the light in this mystery. And God will help me because he loves me as he loved the Blessed Mother, as he loves each one of us. And I pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. And then I pray my Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And I just pray another Hail Mary until I'm done after 10. And I don't think of my words I'm saying. It's like a music, a background, but I try to remember. It brings a peace, these uh, Hail Marys, when we say them. And when I use my beads, it brings a peace because I sense God's love. And I'm looking at the image of Mary going to help Elizabeth. I see her talking to the angel. I see I'm there where Mary's on the road looking for a place to stay. The fourth joyful mystery. We pray after the birth and we see the joy. After the third mystery, we see the joy of Mary and Joseph of how God rewarded her with their trust and love and found a place for them. And then we pray in the presentation how she brings the baby with Joseph to give their baby they got to our Lord. To say, God, I'm only a protector, it's your baby. I guard this baby, but you're the one who really watches over it. Please help me to love this baby and teach the baby how to love you and how to, Jesus, or your own child, how to pray, how to know his faith, and how always to bring the church and to learn their faith and how to be a good example. And so how she gave this child and said, this is not my child, I do what I want. It's God's child. And we pray, may I always be a great example to, to my children how parents need to be patient and not scream and not yell and be mean to them, to love them. Because children need a lot of patience to love. They make mistakes. They're very weak and they're very sinful. Only through great patience and love that they could receive the help they need by the love and humility and the great discipline. So we pray, may I be a good mother and father. May I be a good daughter and a good, I'll be a good son. And we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Amen. When you pray, you could pray with your eyes open. You could have an image of Jesus or Mary or image of the mystery. If you have a book with you, you could have the image in your mind, the most important in your soul that you're seeing. Joseph and Mary going to the church, going to the temple and asking the priest to bless their child and offer it to God, saying, God, it's your child. Do what you want in the will of this child. May we be just instruments of love and guide this child towards heaven and doing your will on earth. Then we have the fifth mystery, finding Jesus in the temple, that everything is not joy. Even in moments of joy, we're not perfectly happy because we're only perfectly happy in heaven when we show that we are truly in a true home. So the fifth joyful mystery, find Jesus in the temple. Joseph and Mary is walking and they can't find their child and they're all concerned, what happened to our child? What did we do wrong? Where did we leave our child? 
So they have a pain and suffering. They can't find their child. So they pray for peace. They pray for calm, that they don't panic and lose their peace and calm, knowing that this is a great trial, but God will help them. If we have a great trial, let us not scream and cry and yell and get angry and, and lose God's presence. And knowing that trials and suffering and pain come into our life, that's part of showing our, tr our love for God, our faithfulness to God. And those trials strengthen us. And sometimes they're even mysterious. But we always trust that God will help us find the answer and give us hope that we're going to be okay. So we pray the Our Father and then we pray looking at Jesus, I mean looking for Joseph and Mary searching, but searching with a peace and a love, with a pain and suffering, but knowing that in God's going to help them and things that got to turn out for the better. And we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed it is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then when we see them coming to the temple and they see their son preaching, their son talking to all the leaders and teaching them the wisdom of the scriptures, they are shocked to see their son having the attention of all these great leaders, these great wise people. And then we see the son talking to his parents, why are you so concerned? Don't you know I have to do the will of my father, the business of my father? And they say, we were hurt. We were searching for you. Why did you do this? And then he told them that I have to do the will of my father. And then it says Jesus was obedient to their parents and went home with them. So children must be obedient and do what their parents say. God, the Father Almighty, was obedient to Joseph and Mary, all his his youth, every every day when he was a little boy, even when he was a grown-up young boy and young man, he listened to them. But he always taught them, I'm here to do God's will of my father. So we as children, if you're a child, if you're a young adult, you do your parents' will. Always. Only if your parents would, because if they were doing something sinful and be very sad if they did that, but that's possible in our days, you pray for your parents, but you don't listen to them. Joseph and Mary would never tell their parents anything simple because they were so full of love and virtue. But we must always listen to our parents if they tell us what to do, even though it's hard, as long as it's not sinful. But we pray for obedience. We pray after the Our Father, ten Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we pray the Ten Hail Marys. You can get your uh, flyers or books on the meditations, all the mysteries. And you can do different mysteries every day. And it takes 20 minutes, 25 minutes, a half hour to pray it with love and pray it with respect without praying it too fast and meditating. And there's a great peace. You can pray your rosary. You don't have to pray it all at once. You can pray one mystery, going to work, two mysteries, in your car, walking. You don't have to be on your knees in prayer. If you can, it's the best thing to pray with a family. And put a candle in front of a picture of the Blessed Mother and Jesus. And then you pray. You, you take the phone. You, you pull out the cord. You shut down your cell phone, uh, cell phone. And you have quiet in your house. This is a time of prayer and peace. And your children will love you. Your children will listen to you. You won't be so angry at your children. Because the graces will pour into your house in your house, in your hearts, in your families. There is a love there, there's a peace there, there's a respect that's giving. Children are different who pray the rosary. If you just tell your children the rules, you tell them the commandments, and you punish them, and you discipline them, they can't really listen to you because you never prayed with them. You never taught them how to pray. We see waves coming in, in, coming in here. These are great waves. They're beautiful. They're powerful. Look, look at them come. They crash into the rocks. Every time you say a Hail Mary, it's like a great wave of grace coming into your house. Look at these beautiful rays. They're coming up to our feet. They're so powerful. And every time you say a Hail Mary, love these are graces that pour into your heart. They pour into your soul to strengthen you. They're here to give you the power, to show us the power of the rosary. We must pray the rosary every day. The Blessed Mother taught the children in Fatima. Fatima is a place in Portugal, a little town. And she said, pray my rosary every day for peace into your hearts. 
peace in your homes and peace into the world. For, for in the world there's no peace. There's wars, there's murder, there's violence, there's death, there's sin, and there's no peace because the world is not praying the way it's supposed to. And each family is not praying. The family does things that they go out and they work, they go out and play, they go and watch TV, but they don't take time to pray. And because of that, there's vice in the family. There's children who are full of depression. Even many homes where children commit suicide, they punch and beat their parents. You, you hear that, you almost believe it's unbelievable. We hear children going into schools and killing their fellow students because of anger and pain that they don't receive love and peace and they have no faith. And so the devil comes into them. And now we see children at 13, 14, 15 years old getting pregnant. We see children, 16, 17 years old, even 13, sometimes killing their children every day in abortion. We see families, mothers and fathers taking their children to abort their children. Because the devil is now in the house. The devil is now in the hearts. And the devil is now in the mind. Because there is no virtue. There is no love. There is no prayer. There is no conscience. They do not know the Ten Commandments. They have that, that love and peace that Jesus loves them. Jesus protects them. Jesus cares for them. Jesus is their best friend. And Jesus guides them the way of peace. A plan in their life to make them happy. A plan to fill them with, with all sorts of joy and all sorts of love. We must pray every day the rosary. The families that pray together have an incredible joy, have an incredible peace, have an incredible love. I see children who pray the rosary every day. I know the parents help them. Mom and dad, you have to help them you, when they're young, not when they're 15, 16, 17, when they're four, five, and six years old, not when they're just little children. I mean, I'm sorry, when they're just grown children when they're only up to two feet high, when they're t small, then they will listen. If you get on your knees and pray, then they want to learn. Let them say Hail Mary with you each day. Because you could say one mystery and then have your child, and they feel important, and they feel they're par participating, and they feel that their prayers are also a blessing for the family. I do that often with the children, and they almost fight to see who's going to be the next one to pray. And they love to pray because they feel they feel the peace and joy of Mary with them, and they feel that they're helping their family, and they are helping the family. Mother and father, your children don't have grave sins because they have not they're not capable of committing mortal sins when they're four, five, six years old. But when they become 10, 11, 12, 13, yes, they could commit grave sins. But when they're young, they, they have this innocence. They have this trust and love, and their prayers are so powerful. When I have problems, when I need help, I ask children, to pray with me at church. I ask children I know in my family to pray for me, and the prayers are very powerful. Parents, if you ask your children to pray with you, God will hear your prayers. You must pray every day, not just once in a while when you have time. And when the father comes home, if he works late, let him pray on Sundays and Saturdays, but let him pray also with the family. And if he can't pray with the family, then he prays with, in his car when he goes to work and when he comes home, or one part of the rosary. But have dad to pray too, because if only the mother's praying and the father's not praying, then the children get confused. They think, well, it's okay for just uh, little children or for a man, I mean a woman to pray, but this is not for, uh, for any uh, men. And then they don't want to pray and they just put the rosary on their necks or in, and in their mirrors of their cars. And it doesn't help them, because I see people with them, they go and kill their babies. The rosary don't help me. You know, if I have my cell phone, if I don't open it up and I don't put it on, then it doesn't help me, it doesn't serve. And so if I carry a cell phone in my pocket, it does me no good. But if I use it when I need to on emergencies and important phone calls, it helps me. This rosary helps me unless I pray it. I must pray it every day. And it's, it's, it's a treasure of all treasures. And you see this ocean. This ocean is huge. It's so deep, we have no idea how big it is. The graces that we receive are immense. I have one hand of sand in my, uh, I have sand in my hand, and we see hundreds of thousands of grains of sand. The graces are like this handful of sand, millions upon millions, billions and billions of drops of water. The graces we receive, God will work miracles in your life. May you say the road through every day of your life, and may the Blessed Mother work miracles in your life and give your family great love and peace. I know it from my heart and through experience and through others. You will never regret it. It will be one of the most important things you ever do in your life.
please pray your rosary every day. And may the Blessed Mother protect you and be with you. And always shine graces into your family and hearts. And always be with you until the day she brings you to heaven to her Son, our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.